I'm Roman Yossi of the Nashville Predators. I'm Dante Fabro of the Nashville Predators. This is Philip Forsberg of the Nashville Predators. I'm Colton Sissons of the Nashville Predators. I'm Eustace Aros of the Nashville Predators. You're listening to the Renegades of Puck with Crazy Charlie. Welcome to the Bunk. Welcome to the Renegades of Puck podcast. I'm your host and captain, Crazy Charlie. Sonny, and before we get to the No Half Step in Hockey coverage, first let me direct you to our home website, renegadesofpuck.com. Once you go to renegadesofpuck.com, you learn everything you need to know about the show and what you're getting educated about the show. Actually, you click on that merchandise tab. and take you straight to our classic logo t shirt, our pride logo t shirt, all of our different special event t shirts, and so much more. All the gimmicks you come to know and love and expect from Renegades Puck are all still available in our online store. Whether that's socks, throw pillows, wall art, bed sets, it doesn't make any difference to us. Something like 88 different items in our online store. The easiest way to say it we've sold out so that you can buy in. Social media is where you can support the Renegades of Puck, and we sure would appreciate you jumping in the trenches with us. Here's how you can support the effort. You can go to Facebook. You can go to Instagram, TikTok. You can find us on X and Threads. You can find us on all those different social media platforms. So please, it doesn't cost you a penny, and it doesn't take you but a second, but it sure does go a long way to helping out this operation. So please support the Renegades of Puck on social media today. YouTube is another place you can find the Renegades of Puck, and we sure could use some more subscribers over there. So again, jump in the trenches with the Renegades of Puck. Today on YouTube, search Renegades of Puck and subscribe to that page. Turn on those notifications. You get all the latest episodes of Renegades of Puck TV. You'll get our full game recaps. You'll get all of our game previews, breakdowns, interviews, all of those different segments all right there. Easy to find on our different playlists on our YouTube channel. Again, thank you very much in advance for jumping in there and subscribing to our YouTube channel. You can find the audio podcast thanks to the Full Press NHL Network and the Full Press Predators podcast just about everywhere. Numerous platforms available to you. What is your convenience? What's your pleasure? Is it Google? Is it Stitcher? Is it Spotify? Is it Amazon? Or is it a different podcast platform? Search Renegades of Puck today and you will find the show right there. So again, from local to global in the year 2023 to 2024 and continuing on the momentum throughout the first six weeks plus eight weeks plus now of the brand new years we sure to appreciate everybody for supporting the show stick taps love and respect to every single set of years that has listened to the show venmo that's how you can support the show financially you can make a donation by scanning the qr code that is currently on your screen or you can just search renegades puck in venmo every single dollar every single penny of every dollar goes a long way to helping this operation right here known as the renegades of puck we have been able to build this fantastic studio known as the bunker and get all the equipment and of course keep the operations up and running a lot of behind the scenes stuff goes into an operation that runs for a long term like we have at this point so we couldn't do that without generous benefactors just like you watching and listening right now at home so again stick taps love and respect scan that qr code make a donation to the renegades of puck today and support your local renegades now listen i know it's time for the half step in hockey coverage so let me check the number then deliver the hockey it's time for operation number 884 that's right time for show number 884 and at this moment in hockey history, the National Predators currently find themselves in fourth place in the Central Division after 65 games skidded. They currently have a record of 37, 25, and 3. 77 points has the Nashville Predators just eight points back from third place of an automatic playoff qualifying position and only 10 points back from first place in the Central Division. It is the closest the Nashville Predators have been since, frankly, October to the tops of the division. The Nashville Predators have a record on on the road, which is where they will continue the second of these back-to-back weekend games in Minnesota of 19, 10, and 2. The National Prayer's road record is only one win away from being tied with Dallas for tops in the entire Central Division. The Prayers have scored 208 goals this season. They've given up 197. That means they have a goal differential of plus 11. Now, the wild card race, of course, is of critical importance with this Nashville Predators team, but let's update you on the Central Division at this moment in time. The Dallas Stars currently find themselves in first place with 87 points. The Winnipeg Jets have skated in three fewer games and are at 85 points. Colorado Avalanche are also at 85 points, so two points separates first from third, Dallas, Winnipeg, and Colorado, and they will continue with this three-team weave until the final minutes of the season. It's almost a certainty at this point. It's been going on for quite some time. Then the Nashville Predators the first team on the outside of the automatic playoff qualifying spot, but securely in a wild card spot at this moment in time. Fourth place with 77 points, 10 points clear of the fifth place St. Louis Blues, and also the sixth place Minnesota Wild. More on them in just a second. They are 20 points clear of the seventh place Arizona Coyotes, who just fell off a cliff in February and have not regained their footing at all here in March. And Chicago Blackhawks are in last place in the Central Division because everyone seems to 
to round out in seven right now in their point total. The Blackhawks are 40 points behind the Nashville Purs at this moment in time in eighth and last place in the Central. Now, the wild card race, which, of course, is of significant interest to this Nashville Predators team. The Predators currently hold wild card one with 77 points. Wild card one would set up with a matchup for the Central Division winner, but, of course, that could change as time goes on. So right now, the Nashville Predators would find themselves in a best-of-seven series against the Central Division's Dallas Stars. The Vegas Golden Knights hold the wild card two spot, currently at 73 points. Calgary, the first team on the outside looking in. St. Louis, the second team on the outside looking in. Both of those teams have 67 points. So the Predators have a 10-point cushion at this moment over a playoff spot. Eight points out of an automatic spot, 10 points out of first, 10 points clear of a wild card spot. So the Nashville Predators find themselves in a rather unique position at this particular moment as we're getting close to 15 games to go in the season. The Preds are finding themselves in somewhat of a comfortable position. Now, let's talk about this Minnesota Wild team and the Nashville Predators matchup that is coming up on Sunday afternoon. For the Preds, once they wrap up this second game of back-to-back matinees on the weekend, Columbus and then Minnesota, Wednesday, so this will be the first time the Predators have had two days off in a while, and then they'll follow up Wednesday's game with two days off again as well. Great opportunity for the new additions to the Nashville Predators roster to get an opportunity to get their equipment and their stuff moved here and also to figure out their teammates a little bit better and get the Predators a couple of practices. And so the Predators after this game in Minnesota, after the second game of back-to-backs, Wednesday in Winnipeg, that's going to be an incredibly important game, Saturday in Seattle, and then Tuesday back home against San Jose. So the schedule is lighter than it has been in quite some time. On the 21st of March, the Preds are back on the road in Florida. Circle that one as an incredibly difficult game. Maybe one of the most difficult games the Preds have left in the regular season. The Florida Panthers are just unbelievable at this moment in time. 323, that would be March 23rd uh, versus the Detroit. Red Wings on home ice. You know, that'll bring out a big crowd. Now, Minnesota Wild National Predators, they met three times already this time, being in the Central Division. So this is the fourth and final regular season meeting. Let's go all the way back to November the 30th when the teams met for the first time. It was the Minnesota Wild scoring a 6-1 to victory, blowing the National Predators out of their own Home rank UC Soros got pulled and took the loss. Only 11 out of 15. Lankanen, respectable in relief, 14 out of 16. Parson in the only goal. He won't be scoring that for the national purse in this one. He's in Milwaukee having some success. Gustafson got the victory for the Minnesota Wild, 26 out of 27. It was Dewar killing the Preds in that game with a hat trick plus an assist for four points. Kaprizov also added a goal and assist for two points and knocked Alex Carrier out of the game. That has led to some bad blood between these two teams. Already a lot of frustrations between these two teams being in the Central Division and competing for the middle of the Western Conference the way they are, which means they're in the wild card pack. The Nashville Predators and Minnesota Wild would meet again on January the 25th, this time in Minnesota for the first time. The Predators would score a 3-2 victory. UC Saros again would get the start. This time, 22 out of 24, picking up the victory. It would be Gustafson again getting the start and picking up the loss in this one, 26 out of 29. Forsberg, Carrier, Yossi each had a goal for the Nashville Predators in this one. Boldy and Eric Snack scored the goals for the Minnesota Wild. Now, they would meet one more time at Bridgestone Arena would take place on February the 29th. The Nashville Furs would score the 6-1 to victory versus the Minnesota Wild. So losing 6-1 to earlier in the season on home ice and now winning 6-1. to Also, there was a lot more to those circumstances. The Furs were on a lengthy, long winning streak at that point when they lost the previous time. And this time, they kept the winning streak going by defeating the Minnesota Wild. So UC Saros picks up the victory and this time third start. He goes 2-1 and one against the Minnesota Wild and the regular season series so far to this point. 33 Three out of 34 were his numbers in that game. The Preds had six different goal scorers in that one. Forsberg was a part of that list. Gustafson got the start again, took the loss against the Preds, so he's 1-2 and two against the Predators this season, 25 out of 31. The Preds overall on the season, aside from that highly embarrassing moment back in November, 2-1 and one on the season. They picked up four out of six total points. That scored the Minnesota Wild, 10-9. The Wild being in sixth place in the Central Division. They have skated in 64 games. They have a record of 30-27 and seven. They have 67 points. They are 10 points behind the National Purs, and this is a moment where the National Purs could honestly step on Minnesota's hopes and dreams and desires of being a part of this wild card chase pack for much longer, because let's face it, if you fall 12 points behind the National Purs, it's going to be tough to make that up over the last couple of weeks of the season. For the Minnesota Wild on home ice, they have a winning record, 15-12, and for they've scored 200 goals in the season, they've given up 212. That's a goal differential of minus 12. In their most 
most recent stretch of action. We go back to February the 29th when they fell to the National Predators and Home Ice 6-1. Then we go to March the 2nd with a 3-1 loss at the St. Louis Blues on the 3rd of March. A 4-3 win versus the San Jose Sharks on the 7th of March was a 5-2 win at the Arizona Coyotes. And most recently on the 8th of March, a 2-1 overtime loss at Colorado. Gustafson took the loss 38 out of 40. So the Minnesota Wild played on Friday night, had an opportunity to travel home and await the National Prayers on a Sunday matinee game while the National Prayers went into Columbus for a Saturday matinee and then lose an hour of time in daylight savings and then will face off against the Wild in Minnesota in another matinee game. Now, the matchup in the rankings between these two teams, the goals for category, Minnesota's a 3.08. They're 19th overall in the NHL. The Predators are 3.17 goals per game. That's 14th best in the league. In the goals against category, 3.28 for Minnesota's 23rd. The Predators rated 16th, giving up 3.03 per game. In the shots for category, Nashville is generating 31.3 shots on net per game. That's 12th best in the NHL. 30 shots even for Minnesota is 20th. Shots against 30.3 for Nashville is 20th. Shots against for Minnesota, 30.2 is 19th. So teams nearly identical in that particular statistical metric. In the special teams categories, the Nashville Predators power play is 18th rated in the NHL, converting at 19.9% or raw data, 44 out of 221 opportunities. Minnesota Wild are two spots better in the power play, 16th overall rated, 21.6 is their conversion rate, 48 out of 222 opportunities. So again, very, very similar in those numbers in this particular category. When it comes to the penalty kill, the Predators have a better kill rate, 77%, 24th rated, but neither of these teams have the best penalty kill. 46 power play goals against four of the National Purse. It's a really high number, but it is not nearly or anywhere near as high as Minnesota's 56 power play goals against the 29th rated penalty kill in the league, and their kill rate is 744 Percent. Let's talk about the individual statistics leaders, a potential goaltending matchup for this game. When it comes to the Nashville Purs, updated statistics after the game in Columbus, Philip Forsberg, 33 goals and 34 assists for 67 points. The captain, Romeozzi, is at 15 goals and 47 assists for 62 points. Gus Nike was 17 and 39 for 56, getting close to setting career highs in assists and also in points. O'Reilly's at 23 goals and 32 assists for 55 points. And Tommy Novak, all he does is make plays for 13 goals. 23 assists now and 36 points overall on the season. Kapril Kaprizov has really driven the Nashville Predators nuts as he's driven a lot of teams nuts. He's got 30 goals on the season. Of course, that's going to make some people mad. Plus 38 assists for 68 points, but he has really gotten under the skin of this Nashville Predators team ever since the hit on Alex Carey back on November the 30th. Uh, the Preds have certainly gone out of their way to try to make Kaprizov pay ever since we saw a lot of that back on February the 29th. So something to watch out for as we're previewing this game in these two teams watch out for the national predators trying to exact yet a little bit more revenge on Kaprizov for that hit earlier in the season Eric Sinek always plays very well against the national predators he's sitting on 29 goals and 29 assists for 58 points Matt Zuccarello another player who typically does good against the national predators 11 and 42 for 53 Boldy's got at least one goal against the Preds this season he got 23 overall in season plus 26 assists for 49 points and favors at 6 and 31 for 37 in net Gustafson for Minnesota is 17 15 and 2 and 8 9 4 save percentage 3.26 goals against average. He's 1-2 and two against the Nashville Predators this season. UC Soros going to get the start on the second day of back-to-backs after Kevin Lankin got the start in Columbus. Soros' numbers are 27-21-3 and three is his record on the season. 907 save percentage, 2.83 goals against average with two shutouts. Kevin Lankin's updated statistics are 9-4-0 and oh on the record, 8-9-7 on the save percentage, 3.09 on the goals against average. Now listen, it is of critical importance that the Nashville Predators go into Minnesota and take care of their business win the season series three to one against a team that is below them in the standings it is the second day of back-to-back but the National Predators honestly didn't exert the most effort against the Columbus Blue Jackets so the Predators should have an ability after rolling all of four lines and possibly having a couple of other fresh players to bring into the lineup Glass sat out the most recent game as a healthy scratch he got banged up pretty hard in the previous game though and I don't think that that was necessarily a performance base I think that was more of 
it's getting to that time in the season where guys are going to need days off. So the Preds, we'll see what the rotation they make. We know that Soros will go in net, but the National Preds need to take care of business against the Minnesota Wild, win the season series, and sweep this weekend series, putting all of the more distance between themselves and the teams below them in this wild car chase. That's going to do it for the preview. That's got you all set for the fourth regular season meeting between this National Predators team and this Minnesota Wild team. Last time, the Preds went into Minnesota 3-2 to two victory back on January 25th. We got to get to the Reverse Sports full game recap. It's coming up next right here on the Renegades of Puck Podcast. Hockey players are as unique as the game itself, and your uniform should be tailored to fit you. Rebirth Sports is your sports apparel tailor. From shells, bags, warm-ups, hats, hoodies, branding, and more, let Rebirth Sports be your custom hockey tailor. And don't forget to tell them they do more than just hockey. Rebirth Sports on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Rebirth Sport, a match made in hockey. It's now time for the Reverse Sports full game recap. We'll go all the way back to March 9th, the year 2024, when the Nashville Predators were in Columbus to take on the Blue Jackets. Head coach Andrew Burnett deployed his lines and defensive combinations the following way, and listen up, some new names in the lineup. Forsberg, O'Reilly, and Nyquist, of course, make up your first line. Mobilier, Sissons, and Zucker make up your second line. Jankowski, Novak, and Evangelista, the third line. Smith, McCarron, and Sherwood make up your fourth line. On the defensive side of things, it is Yossi and Fabro, McDonough, and Chen, Luzon, and Carrier. Kevin Lankin gets the start in net. We are just 17 seconds into the first period, and it is Olivier, former Nashville Predator, off to the box two minutes for tripping. That's going to put the Nashville Predators on the power play off basically the opening faceoff. That is when it's going to be Tarsev coming up with the save on Forsberg, and that's going to be all the Nashville Predators are going to be able to generate on their first power play of the game. Tarasov comes up with a save on Sherwood at 219 of the first period, and he is about to dial in for some significant work. 334 of the first period. Tarasov comes up with a save on Zucker at close range at 543. Another save on Sherwood at the 840 mark of the first period. Tarasov comes up with a save on Luke Evangelis at the 1017 mark of the first period. It's Tarasov coming up with a save on Beauvillier off the rush at this moment in the game just after the halfway point of the first period the National Predators are out shooting the Columbus Blue Jackets 10 to 0. We go to 1051 of the first period and it's Tarasov coming with a save on Nyquist 1135 another save on Carey at 1219 the Predators do break through Sherwood his eighth goal of the season is a wrist shot off of the rush Smith was crashing hard looking for a rebound not necessary Sherwood Beats the goaltender clean. Shots on goal now are 15-0 in this first period. The National Predators are leading 1-0. At 13-07 mark of the first period, it's Tarasov back to work again immediately. Save on Forsberg. Rebound trickles just wide right here. 15-07 of the first. Tarasov comes to the save on Novak with the glove fully extended. This was an impressive, good-looking highlight real save. 15-12. Lankinen comes up with a save on Goudreau. The first save of the game. First shot on goal for Columbus. And a big cheer from the crowd, but Lankin would not be able to relax for very long because just 10 seconds later Lankin's coming with another save on Goudreau after Forsberg turns the puck over the 16 minute mark. It's Lankin coming up with a save on Boom Jenner at the 1753 mark. Lankin then a save on Fix Walensky and then at 1825 Lankin another save on Texier. It is the Columbus Blue Jackets turning things on right here to the point where at 1916 you find Chinikov hitting the post Columbus putting absolute tons of pressure, just like the Predators did in the early portions of the period. Now the Columbus Blue Jackets are dominating the ice. It's tilted. 1955. Lankinen comes up with one more save on Marshenko. We hit the end of the period and where the National Predators once led 15-0 to zero on shots on goal at the end of the period. They are still, of course, leading in shots on goal, but now only 18 to 8. We go to the second period. We're 47 seconds in, and it's Lankinen coming with save on Olivier. Scrum after the whistle. Teams appearing to not be in a very good mood coming out of intermission because at 123 we see Tarasov coming up with a save on O'Reilly his first save of the period that's a jam attempt by O'Reilly on the doorstep good scoring chance for the Predators and another scrum after the whistle at 150 of the second period Texier scores his 10th goal of the season putting Columbus on the board tying the game up at one apiece it was a rebound put back after some soft zone clearage and then Shen did not exactly give Texier a tough time there at the side of the net 
Columbus ties this game up at one apiece. At the 221 mark of the second period, Lankinen already back to work again. This time a save on Nylander at 359 mark of the second period. It's Tarasov coming with a save on Mark Jankowski at 440. Tarasov another save, this time on the captain, Roman Yossi at the 513 mark of the second period. It's Lankinen coming up with a save on Chinakov. And the teams are trading chances back and forth here early in the second period. 536 of the second period. It's Jenner off to the box. Two minutes, four high, sticking on Roman Yossi, but the Predators would not be able to generate a single shot on goal, though they would have lots of zone time and possession, at least for the first half of the power play. Second half of the power play, a bit more disjointed. We go back to five-on-five five hockey in at 839 for the second period. We find Lankinen coming with a save on Vronikov at the 938 mark of the second period. It's Tarasov coming with a save on Tommy Novak. This was a great scoring opportunity. The Preds just failed to capitalize on 1016 into the second period, just past the halfway point of the game. Lankinen comes with a save on Chinakov, and then Yossi is also off to the box. Two minutes for holding on this play. It's going to be Lankin coming up with a save on Nylander plus the rebound follow up. Tarasov, though, is going to come up with the biggest save of the exchange on Colton Sissons. Shorthanded breakaway Sissons decides to go with the forehand instead of attempting to go forehand backhand high. As we all know, that's the move. That works for success on breakaways. We flip to the backside of the sheet, and we find we're at 14-16 of the second period, and it's Jenner appearing to score a goal, but it is waved off immediately for a high stick. It was reviewed by the officiating crew, and it was upheld as a no goal. It clearly looked like by the eye test and also by each and every angle of the replay that this was the correct call by the officials. 15-30 now, the second period is Lankin coming with a save on Wierenski at the 12-17-07 mark of the second period. Tarasov coming with a save on Luke Shen, 18-09. Tarasov a save on Jankowski at the 18-25 mark of the second period. It's Tarasov coming with a save on Carrier, plus the follow-up by Luzon, the defenseman continuing to generate offense for this Nashville Predators team at the 18-55 mark of the second period. It is Wierenski off to the box. Two minutes for cross-checking on Ryan O'Reilly. Tarasov would have to come up with a save on Forsberg with the mask. That would do it for the end of the second period. There would be a carryover of the power play. Shots on goal. Nashville now at 35 after two periods. The Columbus Blue Jackets are at 22. That carryover of the power play onto the clean sheet for the Preds would be for 55 seconds, and that's where we'd find Tarasov coming up with a save on the captain, Roman Yossi. The Nashville Preds had one other opportunity, but missed the net with a glorious opportunity by Tommy Novak at 136 of the third period. It is Tarasov coming up with a save on Luzon at the 227 mark of the third period. It is Tarasov coming up with a save on Sherwood at the 345 mark of the third period. It's Lincoln coming up with a save on Nylander. 416. The Nashville Predators get back on the score sheet when Luke Evangelista carries the puck down the ice, cuts towards the faceoff circle, and rips a wrist shot that is just barred down right there off of the rush. His 13th goal of the season makes it 2-1 to one in favor of the Nashville Predators. Preds hadn't seen a whole lot of offense since the first period. This was a great goal off of the rush by Luke Evangelista. At 514 of the third period, it's Tarasov coming with save on the captain, Roman Yossi, at 552 of the third period is Lankinen coming up with a save on Bronikov. 7.03, Carrier off the box. Two minutes for holding. This puts the Nashville Purse on the penalty kill, but it is Lankinen. He comes up with a save on Marchenko at the end of the power play. So the Purse penalty kill was able to do quite a good and excellent job for about a minute 55 seconds of that power play and then giving up a scoring chance there at the very end. We hit the 9.37 mark of the third period. And it's Tarasov coming up with a save on Alex Carrier. We cross over to the second half of the third period. Period, final 10 minutes of the game. We find a 10:43 of the third period. It's Tarasov coming with save on Nyquist at the 13:31 mark of the third period. It is Tarasov coming with save on Philip Forsberg. 13:53, Lankinen a save on Gud Branson, and then at 14:56 of the third period, we find Tarasov coming with save on Michael McCarron. 15:27 now, the third period. It's Kevin Lankinen coming with save on Texie. Texie crashing. Really hard right here for the Columbus Blue Jackets trying to tie this game up at the 16-17 mark of the third period. It's Lankinen coming up with another save on Johnny Hockey at the 17-10 mark of the third period. It's Tarasov coming up with a save on Roman Yossi's long shot. Rebound gets away from him, gets out to the slot area. Michael McCarron gets the backhand rebound opportunity here and puts it right back to Tarasov. So 49 shots on goal now for the Nashville Predators in this game at the 18-34 mark.
mark of the third period. So Lankanen coming up with the save on Veronikov with the six on five scenario. He pounces on the rebound before any more damage can be done. And then this is a massive exchange in this game. 1914 into the third period with the extra attack around Lankanen comes up with the save on Marchenko times three. Three different jam opportunities right here. 1942, a five star desperation save on Johnny Goudreau in front, throwing and contorting the body in every type of way possible. Just enough to get the job done and knock the puck out of play. Then in 1951, Luzon would pin the puck against the end wall until the buzzer. No one could move him. No one could get the puck. And the game would come to a quiet conclusion with the Nashville Purves winning 2-1 to one and out shooting the Columbus Blue Jackets 49-34. to 34. Uh, The way the Predators came out and played the first 10-plus minutes of this game out shooting Columbus Blue Jackets 15 to nothing and picking up a goal was simply incredible. But they just could not keep that type of intensity and momentum up. And they sunk back. And once the Columbus Blue Jackets elevated, escalated, and reacted to the Predators' performance, uh, the Columbus Blue Jackets looked quite good for the rest of the way. And uh, this game was quite in doubt. The Nashville Predators were the better team in the third period, but only by just a little bit. Lankin coming up with some pretty incredible saves there down the stretch with the extra attack, Ron, to preserve the two points. And the Predators move on now to the second game of the back-to-back -back on this weekend. That's going to do it for the Rebirth Sports full game recap. We've got analysis, box score, and so much more. More coming up next right here on the Renegades of Puck podcast. Hello, hello, hello. I'm Tracy, owner operator of Strong Style Fitness. And that's me and my training assistant Rizzo. And we are here to bring you fitness that meets you where you are by offering circuit classes, bar inspired classes, Tabata workouts, boot camps, guided stretching, and more, all taught by a certified personal trainer me. To learn more, go to our website, strongstylefit.com. Subscribe on YouTube at Strong Style Fitness. Follow on social media at Strong Style Fit. But most importantly, let's get you moving. It doesn't matter if it's your first workout or you've been doing it for years. Strong Style Fitness has the workout that meets you on your journey and helps you along the path to a happier, healthier life. I understand where you've been what you were going through, and where you were going. And I want to take you there. We'll see you on the mat. Mwah. Welcome back in Renegades of Puck Podcast. Let's get started with the analysis portion of things. That was the Rebirth Sports full game recap. We sure do love Rebirth Sports. We got an order coming in from Rebirth here anytime now, and we'll be dispatching Renegade couriers across the landscape as we always do this time of year. So make sure you stay tuned and watch for that. Let's get into the analysis of this game. We always like to start in net, and this is a great one to start with. Lankin in 32 out of 33. He did give up a goal in this game, but you know what? His performance was simply outstanding. The goal that he did give up, a little bit of loose defensive zone coverage. It was a, a soft clearing attempt along the wall that was picked off, sent back on net. And then the rebound put back was a little bit more soft coverage right there around the crease area by Luke Shedd. I do not fault Kevin Lankinen for the goal against in this game. It was an outstanding performance from start to finish. And the finish might be the most important thing of all. Five-star save on Johnny Goudreau. Desperation, contortions, everything. Superman, diving, all of the things needed to be done. Uh, it's just complete desperation. And Lankinen beats one of the best players in the league. The difference in this hockey game is as simple as this. Could not make the stop at one end on Luke Evangelista's great scoring chance and great shot, but could make the stop, Kevin Lankinen did, against Johnny Goudreau there at the end of the game with the extra attacker on down and out, but still managed to find a way back to the play. Lankinen picks up his ninth victory of the season. Did not get moved at the trade deadline, as many people would said. Preds seem to be very happy with their goaltending setup at this moment and are going to make a run with Soros and Lankinen at the NHL level and obviously Askarov at the AHL level. Sherwood picks up the first goal of this game. Also had five shots on goal and three hits and only 11.42 in total time on ice. And it has been just a pleasure watching Sherwood out there on the rink as of late. Skating with Smith and McCarron, that line has been starting uh, almost every game as of late during this hot streak. They've been starting almost every period. There are tone setters, they're pace setters, and Sherwood might be the leader of set 
setting that tone. I love the way he just chips a puck in and then goes in, battles it, steals it back, takes on two, three different defenders, kills time. I just love the way Sherwood goes about playing his game, how consistently aggressive he is out there. And his line has been exceptional. He truly has been the standout and the leader of that line. Picking up a goal in this game that was the first goal of the game. It's a nice shot off the rush. Gets the five hole and Smith was right there with him just in case he needed the rebound or a pass option. But Sherwood picks up a goal and also leads, not leads National Predators, is second on the team with five shots on goal in this game. Luke Evangelista has got the game winning goal and that is awesome to see. That wrist shot off of the rush bar down. Impressive. Both goals by the Predators coming from just about the same spot off of just about the same type of play. Both off the rush. Both cutting in from the wall and then firing a wrist shot. It was Sherwood going five hole and getting the clean shot and it was Evangelista picking the bar down opportunity. So the Nashville Predators score from almost the same spot two different times in this game. And that game winning goal by Luke Evangelista was something of greatness. I hate that he was even looking around at all to see what his options were. The way he's skating, the way he is, uh, the confidence that he has right now, the way he's shooting. Well, it was great to see Luke Evangelista take that shot and get rewarded with that game-winning goal right there. So Luke Evangelista gets the game winner for the Nashville Predators in Columbus. Tommy Novak picks up an assist in this game. All he does is make plays. Jankowski also picks up an assist in this game. Kind of a, an anomaly, something a little bit strange. The Predators did have two goals in this game, but they also only had two assists in this game so notation on that uh, also with Tommy Novak and then Jankowski of course Novak has recently signed his new contract we're all well aware of that well Mark Jankowski has also recently signed a new contract at the end of the trade deadline when the National Predators held their uh, regular press conferences with Barry Trotz's first time doing that but it was all still the standard operating procedure once the trade deadline came to an end the National Predators put out a media call and about an hour later held a press conference where Barry Trotz talked about the new acquisitions of of, of course, <laughs> Bovillier, I almost forgot who they picked up for a second, of Bovillier and Zucker. Of course, they talked about that in the trade of Yakov Trent, but they also, Barry Trotz, before the end of the press conference, made the announcement that Mark Jankowski signed to a new two-year contract and also Dante Fabro assigned to a new one-year contract. So Barry Trotz has made some moves to bring some new players in, but he's also signed a couple of short-term deals with some of the younger players and some of the depth pieces to this team uh, that are going to allow them to stick around for another year or two together as Barry Trotz continues getting his footing under him as a rookie GM in this league. I thought Barry Trotz handled himself quite well at his first trade deadline. He didn't give up really anything. He made some small, low-risk additions that I think after one game, you can see, much like the signings he made in the offseason, a lot of similarity. Hard-working, professional, experienced, veteran players in Bavillier and Zucker looking to come in here and add to this Nashville Predators playoff depth. Listen, the Predators have to start thinking seriously now, being 10 points ahead with a playoff cushion. They need to start thinking seriously about a playoff roster, and that's clearly what Barry Trotz and Andrew Burnett did here at the trade deadline. Bavillier experience with Barry Trotz in the playoffs with the New York Islanders. Zucker experience with Andrew Burnett and the Minnesota Wild. I thought the broadcast did a good job of bringing all of those different details uh, to the uh, conversation. Also, O'Reilly talking to Willie Donick before the game on the rink uh, talked about playing against Bovillier in the past. I thought that was a great question on the broadcast. I thought it was a great thought, and it was O'Reilly with a great answer talking about Bovillier being such a good professional and so hard to play against and being up for big moments. Well, big moments are, are certainly on their way. And I'm glad Bovillier is okay, by the way, after taking that nasty, nasty puck to the back of the head on that deflected shot. So that was a lot of meandering right there to talk about the new contracts after the trade deadline and the press conference. But necessary to bring all of that into the conversation. It's been a very, very busy couple of days here covering this Nashville Predators team. But Barry Trotz seems to have handled himself incredibly well. And I think the Nashville Predators are poised with a little bit more depth, a little bit more experience, and frankly, not losing very much. Yakov Trenin is a sentimental loss, but to be honest with you, in gameplay, it's not going to be long-term a very big loss. I hate to be so cold and clinical about it, but that's the way it goes in professional sports sometimes. Fabro getting that one-year deal. Don't underestimate that one right there. He's been playing some significantly better hockey as of late. All right, we got to get back to this individual game. We got to get to the box score. Let's do that after we hear from our good friends at Stripe Digital Solutions. Incredible people over there. They keep the website up and running. Brandy does such a great job. And I'm so looking forward to uh, having my regularly scheduled meeting with Stripe Digital Solutions. Talk about what we're going to do 
for the spring and the summer and the off season and all of those different things. So here comes Stripe Digital Solutions that we're back to good cold hard numbers known as the box score. The digital environment can be quite intimidating, time-consuming, and cumbersome, especially with all those other areas that need attention at your business. And that's why Stripe Digital Solutions is here to help. I know because that's exactly what Stripe Digital Solutions did for me and the renegades of Puck. From designing my home website and helping me create my merchandise to special event posters, brand building, and social media management, but it's not just that, it's so much more. Stripe Digital Solutions has helped me every step of the way. From startup to full-time operation, Stripe Digital Solutions has been there to assist and advise every single step of the journey. In today's fast-paced world, the path to success is having a strong digital partner and nobody is better in the trenches than Brandy and Stripe Digital Solutions. Get the solution before it's even a problem with Stripe Digital Solutions. Welcome back in. Let's talk about the good cold hard numbers known as the box score. Luke Evangelista, sure were your goal scorers for the Nashville Predators in this game, and that is it. But they did pick up the victory. Jankowski and Novak, the only assists in this game. It's kind of a weird box score here. Shots on goal leaders. Since the Nashville Predators piled up so many absurd shots on goal, the, the count is so high. Forsberg had seven, but Ro Roman Yossi also had seven. Sherwood had five. Jankowski had four. And Carrier had four on net. Uh, the Nashville Predators were dominant in this game when it comes to putting the pucks on net. They weren't always getting the most high danger areas or getting the most highly skilled shots off, but 49 total in the game is pretty, pretty impressive overall. When it comes to the block shots category, Alex Carey had four to lead the team, and it was Ryan McDonough with three to be second on the Nashville Purse. In the hits category for a game that had a little bit of frustrations, a little bit of ill will and feelings towards each other, maybe from back in the old days when they were Central Division rivals, uh, it was only three hits from Smith and three from Sherwood to lead the Nashville Purse. I was really surprised to see Luzon had a really big hit early in the game, but that was the only hit uh, that he recorded for the game. Shen also only recorded one hit, and that's the only hits for the defenseman in total. Only two hits by Nashville Purse defenders in this entire game. I'm not I'm not so sure I agree with that assessment. I, I think that count might be off by a little bit, but that is the official count that will go down to the stats for the season. When it comes to time on ice, leader, relatively good job on the first day of back-to-backs of rolling all four lines, but with the Nashville Predators giving back ground there at the end of the first period and then not necessarily dominant in the second nor the third, uh, the Preds' ice time got just a little bit skewed, but your time on ice leaders are 1953 for Ryan O'Reilly and then 1758 for Philip Forsberg, 1728 for Colton Sissons, the least amount of time skated in this game would be by Sherwood 11:42, and for those curious with the new additions team Bovillier skated in 14:31 and had three shots on goal and Zucker skated 14:16, also had three shots on goal in this game and recorded one hit Bovillier recorded two hits in this game and one of them was not the puck that he took to the back of the head from Alex Carey on the defensive side of things time on ice leaders four of the six defenders ended up with over 20 minutes in total time on ice you can tell that Luke Shen earned the ire of the coaching staff the least amount of time skated of any of the defensemen at 13-22. The most was, of course, from Yossi, 23-26, then 21-39 for Luzon, 2016 for McDonough, and 2019 for Alex Carrier. Fabro and Shen, the least amount of time on ice for the defense in this game. When it comes to your special teams, the National Predators power play was 0 for 3 in this game. 322 in time on ice on that power play for Nyquist, 316 for each O'Reilly and for Sissons and 349 for the captain Romeo. See the power play or the penalty kill power play for the Columbus Blue Jackets was 0 for 2. The penalty kill for National Predators was 2 for 2. Kill time leaders 202 for Smith, 113 for Sissons. And uh, the defenseman McDonough 221 and Fabro 155. Other numbers falling out of the box score to bring your attention to faceoff winning percentage for the National Purse exceptional in this game 59.7%. That's the highest that number has been in quite some time. 17 block shots once the Columbus Blue Jackets started having their way. It wasn't like the Columbus Blue Jackets were setting up in the offensive zone a whole lot. It was more like they were counter punching and trying to get scores off of the rush, and they were quite effective at it uh, for a lot of the game. The Preds were just really slow to react. Now, 13 hits, I think that that's a low number. Again, possibly undercounted, but maybe the National Predators were slow to get to just about everything in this game, including the physical component of it. Five takeaways and two giveaways. Not necessarily an interesting battle there. When it comes to Lankanen, 32 out of 31, one goal against an in-game save percentage of 970, a five-star highlight reel save that will go on the season-ending highlight reel. Maybe Lankanen's best save of the season at this point. 28 even strength saves, three power 
Illinois State's one shorthanded save. And, of course, that save against Goudreau came with the six-on-five with the empty net scenario. And, of course, it came right after the National Predators got cute, got too cute trying to screw around with the empty net instead of firing on the empty net. They almost end up giving up that tying goal. But Lankin bails the team out, getting the National Predators that victory in regulation. Impressive stuff by Kevin Lankin. Great to see him getting that type of opportunity and coming up with that type of save. Now, let's go to Nashville Spartans preview. We got game one coming up. I got to get to this. I need I need you to know about this. Game one is coming up on Sunday. Sunday night, 7 o'clock. Gary Force Acura Ice Arena. Had the opportunity to go on with my good friend Big Joe Dubin and Chase McCabe over at 102.5 The Game, the Nashville Prayers flagship radio station here in Nashville. And I talked a little bit about game one, a little bit about the Spartans. Here's some information for you. I would love to see everyone from the Nashville hockey community come on out and check out the Spartans. It's that first time feeling all over again. First playoff game in team history. First time the junior team here in Nashville, known as the Spartans, is going to the playoffs. They'll be hosting the Toledo Cherokee. I'll be on the headset calling the game for Flow Hockey. Of course, I'll bring you highlight packages and everything right here on the show. But I'd love to see every one of you, if you can make it out. It's $10 tickets at the door. You'll hear that a couple of times here during this segment. So let's go to my quick radio hit with Big Joe and Chase from 102.5 The Game talking Nashville Spartans Game 1. One of my favorite people is not going to join the show. Crazy Charlie, if you've been on radio a long time, you know he's – fantastic and he's got passion for hockey unlike any others he's joined us now charlie good to hear from you my man how are we fantastic great to join you and chase the radio game sure has aged you my friend i hope you're <laughs> feeling better <laughs> <laughs> thanks man i appreciate it all right charlie big event happened this weekend look we love hockey and i love your passion for this what's happened this weekend that uh, you know hockey fans and people around here really need to know about a ten dollar night out in nashville that's what's happening big joe Free parking. Have I sold you already? Do I need to tell you anymore? You can't do anything in Nashville for just $10, and you certainly can't park for $10. Free parking. Kids getting free. Nashville Spartans, your premier junior hockey team here in Nashville in the USPHL making their debut in the USPHL playoffs. Game one against the Toledo Cherokee in Nolensville, Tennessee at the Gary Force Acura Ice Arena Sunday night at 7 o'clock. This team these kids, they deserve to have you come out and see them play hockey. It's their first ever playoff game. Three of the top 16 scorers in the USPHL are on this Nashville Spartans team. JoJo Chase, they went 36-7-1 and this year. And if they win the series this weekend, they go to Utica, New York, for a potential national championship run. Your boys from Nashville, the Spartans, looking to bring a natty right back here to the Nashville. Area. All right, what is USPHL? The United States Premier Hockey League. It is junior hockey here in the United States. It has all ages and levels from age 6 to 21. The league we currently have here in Nashville is Premier. It is next to the top, and the Spartans are one of the best in the Great Lakes Division. Moved from the Southeast to the Great Lakes this year. Made a run in a division championship. Clinched the playoff spot. It's prospect hockey. It's junior hockey, and it's fantastic hockey. These kids are fighting every shift, every minute, every game to try to earn the respect of coaches and scouts across the world to get scholarships, to try to earn professional contracts one day. It's truly, truly the best levels of hockey. These kids are still playing for the passion, the joy, and the love, and one day maybe they could be the next of the 14 to make it from the USPHL all the way to the NHL. Oh, fantastic. All right, so again, tell us it's Sunday night, right? Sunday night, 7 o'clock, Nolensville, Tennessee. Very easy to find, the Gary Ford Tactor Ice Arena. $10 at the door gets you in. Kids are for free, free parking, and it is playoff hockey. Be part of the first-timers club, guys. Do we remember what it was like to be there for that first Nashville Predators playoff game? The excitement, oh, yeah. the enthusiasm, the energy. Well, it's all right here, and you're guaranteed glass seats because the rink is big enough, small enough to host everybody there around the glass. So come on out. I'm telling you right now, Ronan Keenan is a six foot three dynamo at center, and you can't teach that. 88 points on the season. Come see this kid 
Kyle Flynn hits a Michigan or a Forsberg, as we like to call it in this town, just last week against Cincinnati to help put the Spartans in their solid spot in second place. They're going to the Nationals. Come out and see them Sunday night at 7 o'clock, please. Come join us. We're live on Flow Hockey. We're broadcasting, streaming all across the world, and we want everyone from Nashville's hockey community to come out and support these amazing kids. Trust me, they're great kids. Most of them are at the very end of their junior career. This team has been working for two years to get to this level, and this season – they could make a run all the way. We're going to Utica, boys. Come on. <laughs> all right. We love it. We got the information. Charlie, let us know uh, next week how the uh, the guys do, and hopefully uh, we can see you guys at Utica in style, man. Appreciate you. Love your passion for these kids and for this great sport, Charlie. Thank yeah, that you. was a good promo, Charlie. Very good. <laughs> good. Yeah, stepping boys. I'm available anytime. If you guys want to be the celebrity puck droppers for game one or game two, you just let me know. I'll reserve that spot for Big Joe and Chase. You, you really want to see me on the ice and bust my ass walking out there? Which <laughs> you know, would be... I have seen it before firsthand. I love it. It's a great experience. It goes viral every time. Great for the radio station. Great for the Spartans. Great for everyone involved. Let's do it. All right. I'm glad you don't drink coffee. All right. Miss yeah. you, brother. Miss you guys. Thank you so much. All right. Crazy Charlie. Your oh, information. Welcome back in. So appreciative of those guys for helping me out, letting me promote the National Spartans. Being the voice of the Spartans is something I am incredibly proud of. As you know, as you follow along the show, I love bringing you those highlights packages, and I certainly love being at the rink, calling the games, and being a part of the Spartans family. I cannot wait to see a huge crowd out there. Let's show out Nashville, Middle Tennessee region. Let's all get together. Let's come together for a hockey game. It's only a $10 ticket. You can't do a damn thing in this city for $10 anymore. You can't do anything anywhere. You can barely even buy a hamburger for $10 these days. So come Come on out, check out a good hockey. This is a great hockey team, and they deserve to have a big turnout. Let's close out the game. I'm talking about the Nashville Predators, and it's as simple as this. Finish the weekend strong. That was that was ugly. That was ugly, but effective. You know, it was so ugly, it made me think about classic cliche Nashville Predators visiting Columbus Blue Jackets days, like when the game would be as boring as could be for 53 minutes and it would be tied one to one. And then suddenly JP Dumont would throw a two hopper on the net. It would go in. The Preds would get a two to one victory and get out of there with the win Uh, for so many years, for so long. The Predators have gone into Columbus and played down to the Columbus Blue Jackets. Columbus Blue Jackets are a last place team over in the Eastern Conference and the Predators went into Columbus and were the most dominant looking team in the history of the league for the first 12 minutes of this game. They're, they're up one nothing. They're out shooting Columbus 15 to nothing, And then they just did not answer once Columbus elevated, escalated, and Columbus kind of had their way with the Predators. The Predators played down to Columbus the rest of the game, and it was a 2-1 to one squeak out with getting a huge save by Lankanen to save the game at the very end right there. So for the National Press, it was ugly. <coughs> It was ugly, like that cough just now, but it was effective, like that cough as well, because I cleared my throat. So it was ugly, but effective. It was effective because the National Birds got the two points. They got out of there, and and what happens against the Columbus Blue Jackets and Eastern Conference opponent that you'll face off one more time, it makes no difference. But when the Columbus Blue Jackets come to Bridgestone Arena, they're going to have a whole lot more confidence uh, in being able to beat this National Predators team. So the Preds did not do what they needed to do and close this game out strong. The way they played the first 12 minutes, if I could bottle that up and unleash it, the Predators could beat any opponent they faced at any moment in the season but the way they played the remainder of the game after that it just wasn't good enough so ugly but effective they picked up the two points on the first day of back-to-backs go into Minnesota and put a hurting on Minnesota's hopes for getting back into this wild card race a victory over the Minnesota Wild on Sunday afternoon a matinee would put the Predators 12 points ahead of the Minnesota Wild with you know a small number of games to go on the season. So the Preds could win the season series 3-1. to one. They could sweep the weekend back-to-back, picking up four points. They could continue their point streak, which is now actually getting pretty crazy at this point in time. It's impressive stuff this National Predators team is doing. So that's it. Close out the weekend. Even if it has to be another ugly but effective game, get the two points and then get on out of there and get set up for a huge, huge Central Division game against the Winnipeg Jets where, uh, you know, depending on how the results shake out the next couple of days, uh, the National Predators could find themselves, you know, only only maybe six, seven points behind the Winnipeg Jets going into that head-to-head matchup. That could be pretty significant right there. That's going to do it. We'll be back on Sunday night. We'll be recapping the Nashville Predators against this Minnesota Wild team, and then we'll be getting you all set up for the Winnipeg game coming up on Wednesday. We'll have some Spartans game one recap as well coming up right here on the Renegades of Puck Podcast. That's Operation number 884. Show number 884 is in the books. I'm so appreciative of each and every one of you Renegades of Puck. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your viewership. And the most important thing of all, thank you just for being you. I'm your host and captain, Crazy Charlie Sonny. Stick out the love and respect.